Today, we're making Dremel stands. And why are we making Dremel stands? Because I looked all over trying to find one that would work because I got this great extension, but it doesn't really work when it's down here like this. So I came up with two different designs that are better than anything you can buy. This is kind of a real basic design, and this is the more deluxe version with a little holder. And by the way, they both cost around $5 and are quick and easy to disassemble. Interested? Here we go. This has been a very interesting design project. I started out basic and then the more and more I used this design, I wanted something a little bit more. I really like this handle extension. I got this idea from sitting in the dentist chair. I just liked how their tools were. You can hook it up here like this, and that works for most cases. I was a little concerned that if you bumped it, it may come off. So that's why I came up with this D-ring kind of thing going on here. I'll list below all the parts for this build. The other great thing about this, if you don't like a pipe that's this long, you could just cut it down and have a pipe that's shorter. So you can adjust it for any height or situation. You also could take and mount this with a little bit of modification on a two by four or something like that. And you wouldn't even need this extension. You could just come real short if you wanted to. So much flexibility in this design. And that's intentional because I want everybody who makes one of my designs to customize it and make it their own. The other thing is, is you'll notice that this has white pipe and this has gray pipe. This is electrical conduit PVC and this is just the plain plumbing PVC. They're pretty much the same. I just kind of like to use the color sometime to kind of offset it, give it a little different pizzazz. So let's get a top down shot and I'll show you all the details. The end caps for this and this, this is just a basic hook. I like the fact that it comes down a little bit. That gives it a better chance of staying on the hook. And you can just see that I drilled a hole through the center and then just screwed this in. And this guy here, that hook is about two inches long. This is just a standard eye and a two inch D-ring. Pretty cheap, and I like the fact it's not gonna come off. For this part, all you need is some tape, coping saw, a half inch T-connector where I put a line, basically it's coming down the center here. I just marked it off, and then I came over half an inch, and that's so you can pass the cord through. And then on the three quarter inch, three quarter inch, one half inch, I took some blue tape and just went around the edge to give me a guide. I'm gonna go in here and I've got another three quarter inch T. I'm gonna put this together and then I'm just gonna use that in this vise. You just come in here with the coping saw and you make a little groove and then you rotate it. Make a little more groove off the other one. And then just rotate yourself around until you can get that piece off. You move it out of here all like this. It just works a little better. And then once you have a groove, it's real easy to cut this. So you have a nice square cut. That's what the tape does. That's what this technique does, rotating it around in this small vise. This vise is really great. It's a craft vise. You can put it almost anywhere. And I'll post below where you can get one just like this. Boom! <laughs> that came right off. And that's pretty flush. So I'm pretty happy with that. Take one of these tools and just kind of clean it up a little bit. So I'm using another T and now I'm finishing it off here. Boom, and that piece is out. And then you can use the same tool to clean up that groove. It's time to show you the vision for this piece. I would like to have it sit right there. See this little notch here? So it's over the center of the clamp back here. And I want it so that the notch is going to help keep the piece straight up and down here. And it also when I use the heat gun on it, I want to make sure that it molds as best as possible. And it's pretty tight to the groove, which is exactly what I wanted. And it looks like it's pretty straight up and down. Now I'm going to go outside, take this scrap piece of one half inch PVC pipe, and then we're going to go heat this guy up and custom fit it to this clamp. 
So I always use a heat gun outside because I don't want to breathe in the fumes. I've got a mask on, safety glasses, and leather gloves. The heat gun I'm using is my old reliable Wagner. I'll post down below where you can get one of these yourself. I've had this for about seven years and it works great. And then I use an eight inch heavy duty strap hinge, kind of as a shaping device. And you want to heat it up until it gets spongy, soft to the touch. Try not to burn the plastic. After about a minute to three minutes, it'll get kind of soft and spongy. So you shut this guy off, get your clamp, and you force it in there. It's going to take a couple times to get it right, but you want to make sure it's vertical. So I'm going to heat it again and heat it again until I can get it just right. And once you get it to the ideal state, you'll see that's vertical up and down, pretty square side to side, and it just slid right into that boom. It just locks in there. If I've done this correctly, I'll be able to back out the clamp so that when I'm not using the stand, I clamp separately. So it's kind of like a bonus build. And it's important that you have a scrap piece of PVC pipe in there so you retain the size and the quality of the half inch joint in this case or three quarter inch as in the other one. Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in home repairs, designs of all kinds, making and breaking stuff, I even do costumes, cosplay, and props. Check out my channel and please subscribe because you never know what you're gonna see.